Hello everyone, this is Mukundan Raghavan and today we are going to see how to handle the multiple environments in Playwright. In testing, we might be having the multiple environments such as SIT, UIT, ST and development environments. However, we are not going to write the test cases for each environment. Our test cases should be capable of handling all the environments. For that reason, we are going to use the .env file in our Playwright TypeScript and we are going to handle the multiple environments. How to do that? Let's start this video. If we go to the playwright config.ts file, the documentation itself has given some reference to this. For example, here you can see read environment files from the file require.env.config. .env is one of the node library. What is this and how to use that? Let's go to the same documentation github.com mot.la dot env if you go to that url so this is the same url and you can see the definition here dot env is a zero dependency model that loads the environment variables from the dot env and this file can be used inside our code by using the process dot env basically using the process dot env you can access programmatically any variable from the dot env file how to install it will be the npm install.env iPhone iPhone save. If you go to the VS code and try to execute this, and it will install the required.env file. To confirm this, we can go to the package.json and you can see under the dependencies, you can find the .env. Once we have that, let's again go back to the playwright.config.ts. We are going to use the variable or system variable called as node env. When we set the node env from the runtime, or from the terminal, we can just see this inside our code and based on the value, we can pick up the different .env file. For example, as we structured our framework, we will be having all the configuration, especially environment configuration under the config. And we discussed wherever the system related or the environment related things will be under the .env. And same way, we can extend this by using the .env, .qa, .uat. Based on our project, we can add the different environments. For example, if I don't give any node env value in the terminal, that means that it will be empty or undefined. If it is like that, then I'm going to take the .env file from the, exactly I'm taking the library here, .env. By using that, I'm getting the configuration from the path. This is the backtick. When you just represent any variable to be changed its value, in that case, you'll be using the tick mark. And in order to access the system level of variables such as the directory name, whichever our project directory, you will be using the dollar and then underscore underscore directory name, which will totally give your current project folder. Then enter that, I will be using the src config and .env which means if I don't give any value to the node env, it will be taking from the .env. If you open, you will be having the user ID and password. For example, you might be having the different keys and the different keys and values. Now, if I give any value to the node env, it will be going to the same path, src.config.env, again dot, whichever the node env value I'm giving, that will be concatenated with this. For example, if I give the node env as QA, then it will be looking for the .env.qa, which might be this file. So this is the way when we run the terminal commands, we will be giving the different environments. Based on the environment, this username and this password will be taken. And it is not limited to only the username and password. It can be the URL. It can be the different other credentials. Now going back to our basic test, logging test. Before understanding our existing test case, we will try to execute and see the output here. Here I'm going to run the sample test. Before to that, I will just make the other test case to be skipped, just adding the skip so that this will not run when I run this login test.spec.ts. And it will be running only this one. And when I run this, what other things might happen? If the node env file is there, then it will take the value. If it is not there, you might be getting the undefined. The same way for the user ID and password. Let's take the new command terminal. Make sure you are selecting the command prompt because by default, if you select the PowerShell, some of the commands might not work properly. Now I have been here. Let's see 
is there any existing value for the node env so for that echo percentage and then node underscore env and then percentage enter you if you get the same thing as you type that means that there were no values for the node env now with that i will just try to execute the same npx playwright test and then our test is login test and let me open okay this is not required to open the browser just run as it is here you can see it is taking from uat and if you go to the env file you can see in this uat has been mentioned and even I am just printing undefined here. So why it is printing undefined? Because when I gave the value in the terminal, basically npx playwright test login test, in that state, I don't have any value for the node env. That means that it will go to here and it will try to execute the .env file. And when I go to the login test, it is looking for the user ID and password. Obviously, we have something on the .env. It is taking that. But when we look for the node env, we have not set up anything. So it will give the undefined. So that's the reason you can see undefined and then username and then password. How to set the node env? Again, let's go to here and you will be typing set node underscore env equal to QA. Enter. Now, if you want to see the value, just echo percentage node env percentage you can see the value here now if i execute the same test let me execute the same test and here you can see it is taking from the qa if you go to the qa and here you can see the same values have been displayed here and the value for the node env will be the QA. If you see here, the first display will be the node env. So that's the reason since I set up the values to QA, it will be taking this. So now we are clear how to set up the node env and how the playwright config takes based on the value node env. And this code also will be available soon in our Git repository. You can refer that. But let's go to the actual test. Initially, we have written something like this. So directly we have hard coded. However, it is not best practice to hot code the credentials or any kind of, let's say, inputs. So now, rather than just having the hot coded value, I am typing process.env.userID. So when we have this user ID, obviously it will be taking from the .env. And this all setup will be done before starting your test cases based on this code, line number 9 to line number 16. Now, again, it will be taking the process.env.userID. So basically, we have set up the environment to QA. It will take this user ID and this password. But you might notice here a small exclamation number or small exclamation symbol. So which means in TypeScript, as the name suggests, everything should have some type. If you don't have any type, it will try to give the error telling that we need to provide some type for that. Why? Because Imagine you don't have any value for the .env.qa file for the user ID or password. It will give the undefined. And if you get the undefined, your program or your script or your method may not work in the expected way. The main reason why TypeScript became so famous is like it has the type safety so that it will avoid unnecessary runtime errors. But if you don't provide the type, it will give more errors. Basically, we are going to test it whether it is non-null value. So for that, we are going to use the exclamation symbol. This exclamation symbol will make sure that it is not null value. Okay. And however, even you can put the if block, for example, you can put if it is undefined or something, you can skip that or you can give the default value. But just to avoid the type error, we will be giving the exclamation symbol, which will make sure it is not the non-null value. Okay, now we have everything. Now we will be using the environment ID and it will be taking from the .qa. Let me explain one more time why it is taking .env, .qa. So because I set up the node env to qa. And when I set the node env to qa, when you start the execution, it will go to here, playrate.config. It will look for the node env. First of all, if it is null value, it will take the by default .env. We have set up 
node env as the qa so it will go to the dot env dot qa and when we open we have two values user id and password now hereafter when you want to use any kind of keys from the dot env file or dot env qa file you will be using the process dot env user id or any key value it will be used and we have used the exclamation symbol to avoid the undefined values inside our script or to avoid the typescript error so after having everything it will be executing by using the same credentials that we have here let me execute and see and i need to remove this skip so that you will be having the real output let me go to the terminal and let me try to execute and this time i will be using the headed so that you can see the output explicitly it has been loaded successfully and service also shown and test cases has been passed basically here we are not focusing on the test cases so next time when we try to set up some other environment and it will go to for example if i set the uat and it will try to go to the same uat and it will try to get the same kind of user id and password but it is our responsibility to make sure all the dot env file or dot env dot any kind of environment files should have the same kind of keys but values can be varying depends on the environment so that's the beauty about the dot env file so that when you run in your terminal you can change any environment you can run from that so this is all about this video about how to handle the multiple environment by using the dot env file thanks for watching and always be a rainbow in others cloud <laughs>